Hey everybody, it's Kane. What's up? Welcome to my tutorial or really showcase of problem solving. I, I don't know how I really do tutorials. Uh, so I've been having this issue with my crouch and it's really like when you search online, there's really no good solution for one C++ and two multiplayer. Like everyone has a quick and easy way to get a, a smooth crouch, but it doesn't work in multiplayer and they don't really implement it in C++. Uh, so I had to kind of like combine everything that I found and add a little bit more flavor to it to get my crouch to be smooth. And for bonus, I'll even show you guys how that same technique worked on helping you um, stop clipping through things in the world in your first person shooter. But before we get into that, Follow me on social media, man. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Twitter. Um, shit. I'm a, uh, I'm a low person right now. Can I help me get my numbers up? I need your help, baby. Come on. But yeah, enough of that. Um, we'll get right into it. So here is what the final looks like. Uh, I do not have a crouch animation. Um, so... As you can see, if I am to walk into this dude, I do not collide with him. If I walk into this wall, I don't clip through it. If I walk through this, I can't go underneath it. Why? Because I'm not crouched. And did you see that fucking butterscotch crouch, dude? Look at this. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? That's like cutting through butter. And if you look on that left screen, the smaller one, the client, it's replicated to the client. And if I go here to this client, it's replicated to that client. You can see that he crouches too. Oh shit, if I go to this one. <laughs> you can see that he crouches too on your screen. Um, yeah, so I'll show you the code. I'll, I'm not gonna rewrite it. I'll just show you what I did and I'll step through it. And then I'll show you what I did inside of Blueprint to like, combine it all together and for those motherfuckers on YouTube and social media talking about blueprint is this and that man if you're not using blueprint you you probably don't know how to use unreal you're not using it the right way so for me I have two functions that get called when I press whatever button I'm supposed to press for crouch that is on crouch and on crouch, we're calling a, let me show you this inside the header. This is a blueprint blueprint implementable event. And this is getting called in the blueprint, which I'll show you later. So I call this player crouch, and then I call this client crouch. This client crouch, all it does is takes in a variable that you set inside of the on crouch. Takes that variable, it sets a replicated variable that we have to the same value that you sent in and then it checks if that value is true if it is we tell the character movement component that we want to crouch this is an actual built-in variable that you set as a flag when you want to crouch you can also do this crouch and you can set this to true this will all this is the same as this but I feel like when you're working with a network game, sending a flag is better than sending a whole function. So we do the flag. So we set this flag to true. If this value comes in as false, we set this value to false. Now this timer is just for something else that I was testing. Uh, I was running to some correction issues and I had a, a idea to and I actually got to get rid of this inside of here. I came up with an idea to turn off the server's correction logic. So for however long you're crouched, the server won't correct you because it knows that you're crouched. But that wasn't the case when I wrote this. When I wrote this, it was to, to negate the fact that when I crouched, the server didn't know I was crouching because I was setting the variables wrong. So I can actually get rid of this, but I'm going to keep it just for now because I don't want to break anything just in case that is necessary. So, yeah. So I clear that timer, and then I set the variables that 
inside of that timer I make false so in in when I crouch I set these variables true and then when I uncrouch I set a timer to set these variables false which gives me like a, a 0.3 second delay because that's how long my timeline is for my crouch to come back up before the corrections kick back in and on uncrouch all we do is call the implemental and implementable that is a hard word to say implementable event inside a blueprint that says uncrouch we call client crouch but this time we set the value to false and then we set that timer and that's it like uh let me show you this i'll show you what this looks like in the header so this is a u property it's replicated over the server it's transient um and i can probably get rid of this but inside of the blueprint, I don't think you have access to B is crouched. You probably do, but just in case you don't, I've used this. And this is so in the future, whenever I want to uh, replicate the animations, I can use this replicated uh, variable. And of course, replicated variables, you have to um, set them up in the, the get lifetime replicated props. I told it to skip the owner because I'm already gonna know this is true when I crouch. Um, so yeah, so that's the code for that. And then if we go into Unreal, um, and if you guys see, I, I've been referencing the the gas shooter. Of I, man, this project is literally saving my life. Like I don't have to learn an entire system from scratch with no help I can learn the system by implementing it and basically copying the code and fixing the code to work for me which is not a bad thing in coding man everybody man code nothing new is coded under the sun it's just a different variation of it so don't feel like you're stealing people's code if they put it out there for free as a helpful resource man use that resource so enough of my spiel um, so here are those two events, the implementable events. I got player crouched, player uncrouched. All they do is run a timeline that lasts for 0.3 seconds. And that timeline, it lurps in between my, and this is my camera boom. I'm lurping between the camera boom, not the camera, because we don't want to move the camera. We want to move what the camera is connected to. Uh, so we lurp in between my relative z, relative z location and then we set the relative z location at the end of that um, so yeah this is every tutorial they'll show you this they'll show you and I even have the old logic here I was taking my capsule component I was shrinking it in half and then I would set the capsule height like it, with the same logic here with the same timeline but this is actually not good. It, it works in a, a single player game. It works beautifully in a single player game, but in a multiplayer game, it, it will not work. So you have to do this and just set the camera location because it, once you start messing with the capsule, you start fucking with things that the server has control over. Um, yeah, so if I go here to my blueprint viewport, this is the magic right here, baby. Uh, so my project is different from yours. You probably started off right here. Your camera's right here. There's no spring arm and you don't have any of this stuff. So what you want to do is click on your capsule component, add a component, type in spring arm, and you want to add that spring arm. And then you want to find that spring arm and find your camera and connect your camera to that spring arm. I can't do it because this is done in C++ already. You said this is inherited. Um, and then you want to click on your camera boom and you want to set some settings up. First, uh, this all depends on what you want for your game. But for me and where my arms are currently, which these will this will change once I start adding in my own um, my own assets. These are template assets that come from the shooter game you can migrate them over just to get a good starting base comes with animations 
uh, muzzle effects, all type of stuff to at least get your point across and so you can test your game with some decent art. But yeah, you want to set this target arm length, which is how long this spring arm is from the middle of the capsule to the end of this point where the camera connects. You want to set that to whatever you I got it set at 60. You want to come to camera collision, probably close. You want to turn this off. Uh, I found that if you don't have this off, whenever something uh, collides with this small amount of space that's open to collide with, the camera will shrink in. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a third person project where you're up on a wall and your camera is like right on you and shit because you hit the wall. That's what that collision check does. So you turn that off for this because we don't need it for first person. You want to enable this, use pawn contr control rotation. I'll probably enable all this stuff inside of uh, C++. Just get rid of these yellow arrows. Um, you want to enable camera lag. If you don't enable camera lag, it won't be as smooth as, as mine looks. Don't enable uh, camera rotation lag. This is defaulted at 10. This camera lag speed is usually defaulted at 10, so you want to set it to uh, uh, like a number that feels good for you. Lower values are slower, higher values are faster. And I think that's all the settings that you need to set up. And just like that, in one added component, we've set up a way for our collision mesh to block our arms. If I turn this off, let me just... Uh, Turn this to none. Let's clear it. This is where our arms are, and this is our capsule collider, which interacts with the world. And now this is blocking our arms from interacting with the world, because usually this will be here, and your arms will be coming out, and you'll be clipping through all types of shit, making your gun clip through the wall, which looks weird. So, just with that uh, boom, the spring arm component we've uh, eliminated both that jittery ass crouch and clipping unwanted behavior. And I'm not gonna show you what it looks like when you don't have that camera lag on, because if you're watching this video, you, you fucking know it. Sorry, this takes a long time to load because I got my packet lag on 500, so it's like simulating people with terrible internet. You see, you can see that you're not able to go through this but you know that you're hitting it you know that that wall is there and if you crouch you go underneath but if you don't crouch you don't if you do you do and it's smooth you get up smooth you don't do that glitchy ass get up from the crouch that they do I gotta turn the fucking shadow off on that mesh you guys see that that's terrible look at that floating mesh um, but yeah, it's very fluid. It works pretty good. But yeah, that's pretty much it, man. That's pretty much what it is. Um, you go in there, you add a spring arm component, you enable the lag on there, you give it some length so it can be a distance between you, the camera, and the collision, and which gives you an offset from the world so you're not face in the world type shit. Um, and you play with the settings until they feel good with for you and you go from there but yeah man watch the video again if you if uh, you didn't catch anything I'm, I'm pretty sure I went over everything if you have any questions get in the comments um, subscribe to my channel follow me on social media stop playing man I'm on Instagram I'm on YouTube I'm on Twitter I got a fucking tumblr if you want to follow me on that motherfucker too um, but yeah, man, I appreciate y'all stopping by watching this. I know it's getting long. I'm probably going to upload this whole 20 minute video, maybe with some edits, but yeah, I'm out. Peace.